Just been a long day. Just talk to James. You go. I'm out. All right. Hey, James from the 360 Sports Network. How are you? I remembered your name. Uh, I appreciate that you introduced me, seeing as you're the one who's able to say my name right now. Chris, you can just go to sleep, I guess. Yeah, I'm out of here. He needs a nap today. It is one of those days, gentlemen. It's one of those days. I need big time, I think, big time wide receiver help because my two starters are Steve Smith and Stevie Johnson. They're not really getting it done. Uh, on the bench, I have Malcolm Floyd, and really that's about it. So I, I don't really know what to do here. Yeah, I definitely don't like Stevie Johnson this week. He's uh, almost a unanimous fit. We just don't trust him against, uh, against the 49ers, especially after they shut down Holmes. Take a look on the waiver wire. I really like James Jones this week. He is a touchdown machine. He's got three already this year. And with Greg Jennings most likely out, he hasn't been doing much already this year. Jones is getting a lot of targets out there. I shall search as we speak. So that's, I, yeah, um, how about this? I got Tony Romo, two of my, he was my starting quarterback for uh, two of my teams. Uh, as you know, Monday, he did very well. Oh, he did great. If, if, if you were getting points for throwing it to the other team, he cost me 10 points and got me a, a nice chunk of negative for the most part. So I, are we done with him, Is this, or should I hang on to him? I, You know, it, normally I would definitely say hang on without any doubt. Uh, the fact that he's on bye week this week makes him a little bit more likely that you might think about getting rid of him. But I'll tell you what, Tony Romo is too good of a quarterback, and yes, I will say that again, he is a good quarterback. Um, to, <laughs> no, he he really is, and when you think about it, I mean, he tried to win a game. He needed to force a couple passes late. Uh, two of the earlier interceptions were were ones right off of another guy's hands, off of his receiver's hands, not even his fault. Uh, the Des Bryant one looks ugly. He can put up points for you, and he will put up points for you. Um, the, the question is, how long do you roll with him, especially when there's a lot of other good. Um, quarterbacks out there that you can play. Here's what I would suggest, honestly. There are other guys like me who just have blind faith in Tony Romo. Put him on the trading block. Somebody will try to buy him buy him low, and you can get something out of it, especially when there are literally 20 other quarterbacks who I could easily start over Tony Romo on a weekly basis. I'd put him on the trading block before I just release him. Okay. Uh, how about some tight ends that I could look for out there? Uh, tight ends, you know, people are starting to have buys now. I don't carry two tight ends. So this is kind of the uh, week where I'm on the waiver wire looking for one to fill in. Yeah. More. So is there anybody I should look at? Well, let me just say real quick, I felt like I was a New England Patriots last week. All of a sudden I had four tight ends on my roster. Now this is a league where I started two, but yes, most people are going to be like you only have one, and I think that's the smarter way to go. Uh, I like Keith Miller big time um, just because of what he's actually done this year. He has more touchdowns this year than he had in the past two combined. I like him against Philly this week. Um, I like Kyle Rudolph. A lot of people are going to be scared off after a four-week last week when uh, Minnesota didn't even need to throw the ball. I think he has a big, huge bounce-back week, um, and both of those guys are available in well over 50% of leagues. Um, take a look, too. A lot of people forget about Greg Olson. He might be available. He might not. But uh, he has led the team in targets the past two weeks for Carolina. So um, especially playing at home, I like him as a possibility almost every week about Dennis Pitta from Baltimore? You know, he scares me. He looked great to start the year, and then he didn't even get targeted um, when they played. I think it was against in the Cleveland game. He didn't even get targeted. So I, I'm still a little unsure about him. Um, I think there are probably more uh, more guys out there who are going to get you at least two or three catches consistently, especially Pitta. Um, when, when you're getting a tight end off of the waiver wire, you want somebody who's going to at least get you some points or somebody who has a touchdown threat. He doesn't even he didn't even have a many touchdown looks at all. I don't think he has a touchdown yet this year. So I think Pitt is someone I would shy away from at this point. How about uh, Jared Cook from Tennessee? Uh, you know, he has a little bit more of a um, of a camaraderie with Hasselbeck than he does with Locker. So if Hasselbeck plays, he might be a little bit better. Um, but, again, he's up and down as well. And he's at least good for a couple catches. I would take him over Pitta, but uh, – you know, I could nitpick any tight end on that trading block. All right. Well, I just, I'll just have to see what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, with, with the guys who are going to be available on waivers this week, I would go with somebody who, if you look through their stats, they're consistent um, anywhere from 40 to 70 yards per week. Don't go after the guy like a Dante Rosario who had one week where he had three touchdowns and he has one catch the rest of the year. Stay away from guys like that. 
uh, get somebody who's going to get you some consistent points. Even if it's four or five points, oh, well, it's better than getting a goose egg. I'll tell you someone who, uh, you know, had everyone going crazy week one and hasn't anything since is Pierre Garçon of the Redskins. You look at his stats, you know, after that week one, he, he, he hasn't really done too, too much. No, he was out. Um, he was out week two, and I believe week three as well with injury. Um, I'm surprised that Hankerson hasn't done more in Garcon's absence. Um, both of those guys are feed upon each other. If Garcon's playing, I think he's going to be a good play. We saw in week one, but even that, he only had one long catch. But he has that capability of stretching the field deep. Hankerson, if Garcon's in the lineup, Hankerson needs to be on your bench. Otherwise, uh, Hankerson can become a flex play anytime uh, Garson is injured. That whole Redskins with Steven Core, though, um, it's still a rookie quarterback. I don't care how well he does in the air. It's too inconsistent to, uh, to be really happy with any of their play. It seems like, if, unless you have RG3, if you have any Redskin in your offense, it kind of looks like it's, it's going to be hit or miss with a Redskin play. It really is. And, I mean, even Alfred Morris, you would think, looks good. But it's still Shanahan. I still am scared that all of a sudden Evan Royster will get 30 carries and then next week Roy Lou will get 25. I'm still scared about it. It hasn't happened yet. But even he hasn't been the most consistent guy in the world. And, uh, you know, I now have – I currently have three quarterbacks in my roster. I'm going to dump one. It's down to am I going to get rid of Cutler or Phillip Rivers because I have Big Ben now. I got him. He was just a free agent. And I looked at his stats and went, oh, I think I'll take you. And I'm going to start playing him. But Rivers or Cutler, who would you let go? So statistically, they're not really that different. No, they're really not. I think um, Rivers has more big play potential, big game potential. Um, he can all of a sudden go out there and throw a three or four touchdown game, but he could also be a North Turner type guy and um, and just go and have a game where he only throws it 20 times. Cutler, same thing, up and down. Honestly, I think I would get rid of Cutler just because I think Philip Rivers has the more big game potential. But more likely than not, you're starting Roethlisberger each and every week the rest of the way out. Yeah, I think I look at those stats, eight touchdowns, the one pick, almost 1,000 yards already. already and with a bye week included, I was like, I, I could have that on my team. Yeah, and it was um, uh, unbelievable that you were able to get him on your, on your waiver wire. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people are jumping on the Mendenhall bandwagon. I don't think there's going to be any difference once Mendenhall comes back. Maybe uh, two or three extra carries per week, but I don't think it's going to be much at all. And then uh, if there's if someone has their, if their defense is on by this week and you're looking to pick up a defense just for a week, you know what are some defenses other people might not know about they might want to pick up if it's just for a week? Um, you know what, the Giants defense a lot of people have forgotten about because their secondary is so bad. Um, they would be a, a solid play that's probably available on free agency um, against the Browns this week. Uh, you know, the Bears showed really, really good promise, and believe it or not, they weren't uh, all that popular. I think only taking about 70% of leaps, so they could be out there. Um, look at guys who are coming off of, off of bye weeks. No, I wouldn't take the Colts. Steelers are probably taken, but that's something going down the road. Look who's coming off of a bye week who might have just gotten released. Um, they're good possibilities. Even um, probably the play of the week, I would say, would be Cincinnati, though, playing the Dolphins. Um, I, I don't buy into 250 yards from Heartline last week. That was a fluke. Um, they're playing a much better team now, and I don't think, uh, I don't think there's going to be much difference. I think the Bengals, for sure, are, the better, are uh, a great play this week. All right. Well, you've given us a lot of advice. We take it as always here, and we hope it helps us out on Sunday. Uh, hopefully you guys keep those uh, keep those records going in the right direction. Uh, uh, we can get you championships any way we can. We'll take it, seeing as baseball obviously didn't go well. All right, James. Before we let you go, let's let you plug the website. Absolutely. We are 360sportsnetwork.com. We're really heavy into the fantasy football season right now. Um, we are talking everything we can. We have uh, po- daily podcasts uh, from our friends at the Fantasy Football Toolkit, uh, giving you daily updates when it comes to fantasy football. Um, we have... Start them, sit them, sleeper picks from four or five different guys every week. So check our website because we all have different guys. I mentioned a couple of them. C.B. Johnson's a unanimous sit versus uh, we have some really interesting quarterbacks that you might want to look to start. So check out the website, follow us on Twitter at 3F Network, and send us your start sw- sit questions so that we can make your team, uh, your personal team, as good as it can be. All right, James, we appreciate it. But we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Absolutely. Keep it going, guys. All right, that's James from the 360.